This is the set list I'm going to do with these jokes. I'm calling it the Dubai 8. Eight jokes, it's eight high joints, and that's it. Eight joints, and I'm leaving. Yeah, yeah. All the way from Brooklyn. Put your hands together for Dwayne Curtin. Thank you very much. Oh, my goodness. How's it going? Nice, nice. I am in Dubai. Can you believe that? That's amazing. You know, because, like, we, you know, we go up in America, there's the American dream. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this. And there's a Dubai dream, too. I, I, it seems like no matter where you start, you can make something out of yourself. Look at me, from Brooklyn, New York. Now I'm in Dubai. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> no matter where you start, like, in, in New York, in Brooklyn, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, no matter where you start, you can always, there's always hope. My cousin Calvin from Brooklyn, he spent seven years in prison. <laughs> While he's in prison, he took courses, got his college degree in jail. Yeah. He graduated, he graduated top of his jail class. We're very proud. We're very proud. He, he made the warden's list. He was a good student, my cousin. My cousin got out of jail. He got out of jail with his degree, and in two weeks, he got a job at a bank. <laughs> no, I'm teasing you. He, he didn't get a job at a bank. He, he did a bank job, is what I meant to say. <laughs> well, he wanted to go back and get his master's degree, continue with studies, and yeah, yeah. But it was messed up, though. It was unfortunate, because when he went back in, they sent him to a different prison, and his credits didn't transfer. He had to start. Uh, yeah. He went to community jail. You got to go to the right jail, you see? <laughs> the American dream. You know what's the American dream right now in America, right? There's a black man and a woman running for president. That's dope. That's the American dream. Yeah. That's the American dream. And I think, like, I think Obama's a good choice. I tell people back in the States, Obama's a good choice, you know? He went to Harvard, he's smart, he's an Ivy Leaguer, right? And I tell my white friends back in the States, you know, he's half, he's half white. <laughs> Which is good for the white people, kind of ease into it, just kind of ease into this thing, just slowly, you know? Just let me dip my big toe in, hold on a sec, ooh, that's cold, ooh, ooh, that's black, ooh, ooh. And you got to understand, as a black person, I don't want any black person, and I don't want any black man in office. I want the right black guy, especially the first guy. You want him to be good? Yeah, because otherwise, if he's not good, all, everybody else is going to be like, see, we gave you a chance, you messed it up. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, but here's what's good about Obama. Here's what's good about Obama. The half that's black is African. Yeah. So. If he wins the election, there's no cousin Ray Ray in them that's gonna show up at the White House looking for the hookup. <laughs> you know, the Wasta, you know what I'm saying? Not looking, Look, no Wasta, you see what I'm saying? Because his family, they're here. They can't just go over there, they're here. And Umbeki, Umbutu, those guys just can't go over. There's a process. I've actually, I've been to Africa four times, you know? And here's what, I, here's what I liked about going to Africa. See, my grandmother raised me. And when we were growing up, I never could waste food, ever. I never waste food. I eat all my food, even till this day. If we go out to eat, I eat my food and your food that you don't finish. <laughs> she never let us waste food, ever. We ate soggy cereal, cold oatmeal. Yeah, my grandmother, she knew the real expiration date of food. Not the date it says, but the real date that it goes back, you know? I'm like, Grandma, this is past the date. She's like, no, no, it's five working days. You can still, you can still eat it. And Monday was a holiday. Please eat, eat. <laughs> now, when you're growing up, what do they tell you when you're growing up? They say, eat all your food because they're starving kids in Africa. So when I went to Africa, I had a very clear conscience. Yeah, I got off the plane. I was like, hey, good to meet you guys. Umbeki, Umbutu, how you doing? Good to meet you guys. Uh, hey guys, listen, I, uh, I ate all my food. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know if you were starving, but it wasn't me, is what I'm trying to tell you guys. <laughs> Back home, you know, people drink. And I tell all my friends, I go, you know, I don't drink because alcoholism runs in my family, so I don't, I never drink. My friends don't get it, though. Every time we hang out, my buddies, always the same thing. They try to get me to drink, you know? It was like, yo, Dwayne. <laughs> yo, I know you don't drink, right? No, 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 I'm saying, I know you don't drink. But you're gonna get drunk tonight, boy! <laughs> I'm saying we got Budweiser, we got Heineken. I'm like, get off my back. What if I had a different problem? They still wouldn't care. Like, yo, Dwayne, come here, son. Come here, come here, come here. I know you lactose intolerant, right? <laughs> but you're going to drink some milk tonight, boy. I'm saying we got Cocoa Puffs, we got brownies. <laughs> hey, yo, I know you diabetic, right? <laughs> Sugar! <laughs> and you know, I don't have a problem with drinking. If you drink, that's cool. But sometimes people have a problem with me not drinking. Yeah, one guy said to me, he looked at me in the face, he goes, I don't trust anyone who doesn't drink. <laughs> I thought that was so stupid. I could see if he said, I don't trust anyone who doesn't blink. <laughs> Look at that, if someone doesn't blink, that's scary, right? Because if you don't blink all day, you're an alien. I'm not sure if you wear. I don't care if it's your best friend you've known since you're two years old. Eight hours go by, and they don't blink, stab them. That's not your friend. That's not your friend anymore. <laughs> we just need alternatives to drinking. Like, in, in, in Western culture, like, drinking is what bonds us together, you know? After my show, people always want to buy me a drink. Always want to buy me a drink, but we can bond over anything. You don't got to buy me a drink. If you like me tonight, you don't got to buy me a drink. Why not buy me some cake? <laughs> I like cake. <laughs> like, hey man, you're really funny tonight. Want some cake? <laughs> <laughs> Say like, your favorite team wins the championship, right? I heard the Dubai guys, they won the soccer thing, right? So, <laughs> so they just won. Them in the locker room celebrating. There's no champagne, there's cake. <laughs> They're like, well, you know, in the third quarter, it got a little crazy. <laughs> they made a run, then we made a run. And I think in the end, we didn't want to go home the most. <laughs> <laughs> and girls would all be like, I only smoke when I eat cake. <laughs> You see a lot of famous people in LA. You know, I like seeing famous people, but it doesn't affect me really. But I saw one person, and I couldn't believe it. I saw this actor named Robert Blake. I don't know if you know him. He played Beretta. Robert Blake is a white guy who, uh, he was on trial for, his wife was murdered. And he was on trial. He had a weak alibi. His alibi wasn't that good. He was like, I was in the car with my wife. I coughed. <coughs> I looked back over, and she was dead. I don't know. <laughs> But here's the thing, they found him innocent. He got off. He got off. And I was excited to see him. Because I tell people, I don't know if he did it, I don't know if he did it, or if he didn't do it. But to the white people, I say, we're even. You know what I'm saying? Now we're even. <laughs> Listen, you had Robert Blake, we had OJ, 